What time is it? Oh, it's early morning. It's not. What do you mean it's not? What time is it then? Oh, it's time. It's time. It's time for another exciting episode of the da 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 burning bench. I'm Willie and welcome. Today, we have a very extensive repair to do on a ring. Oh, just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Anyway, we have a ring that was cut off the customer's finger and uh, the channel the channel walls were thin and when they cut it off they stretched it and when they did that they they broke uh, uh, the channel on each side they cracked it it separated lost stones so we're going to repair that we have several places to repair one we have on the bottom of the shank we have to repair that we have to repair the channel and then we have to repair rebuild prongs and do several tips so let's get started first thing of course as always we're going to turn the torch on there's something about that turning this torch on that's just magical then I'm going to solder the cracks of the on, on the channel first. And the reason I want to do that before I solder the shank is I don't want to distort it any more than it is. So I'm going to flux it. No, that wasn't fluxing. That was denatured alcohol. We're going to set it ablaze. Get set up here on the right side of the channel. And get some solder. And Okay, so now let's solder the other side. First I'm going to put a little solder in. And then take just a piece of gold wire and this is gonna take and, and, and really give us some strength okay got that solder that gold wire in there all right now we're gonna let that cool and we'll be right back don't go away well we're back it's cooled down I'm gonna get a file now and I'm gonna trim up what we did Okay, we got it all trimmed up now. And so I'm gonna go ahead. Now the reason I didn't solder the shank first is because I wanted to get this part stabilized. So now that it's stabilized, I'm gonna take, and we'll be sizing this later, but we wanna size it from the back side. So I'm just gonna solder the shank back together. Now we're gonna get our shank pliers. Alrighty then, here we go. Little flux, little solder. Get this up here so the camera can see it. OK, 
Okay. Now you may notice that I still have the stones in this and everything and, and I soldered while the stones were real close. It's sapphire and diamond. They can take the heat. So we're good to go. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to take and try to get some semblance, semblance of shape back into that channel. And it looks like we need to take and bend it in just a little bit. I'm going to take a burr and I'm going to take this roughness off. It's real uneven right there. Now, because we'll be building the channel, I'm not real worried about whether or not it's got a, a good flush edge on it. My concern is just being able to get the stones back in and and building the channel back up. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'll be right back. I got to get the diamonds and the sapphires to go in here, and then I'm going to get a little stock. We're back. Okay, so what I needed to do, I picked out a couple diamonds, uh, and I got to measure those and find the right burrs for them. This the diamond. is 189 and the sapphire is 174 so as long as I get burrs that are close then we're good to go uh, I have this burr let's see it is 183 perfect and then this looks good 159 that's close enough now when we're when i'm doing a channel set we have our channel and i use what's called a heart burr uh, this is what a heart burr looks like and it's it it's wedge shape so it's high in the middle and comes down and what i want to do is i want to take that channel and I want to cut a groove in there just a slightly smaller than the actual stone. Uh, and then when we put the stone in, hopefully we can slide it in and kind of pressure fit it and get a good night, good tight fit before we hammer the bezel, the, uh, the uh, channel down. So I'm gonna start with my diamond, which is the larger of the two burrs. Quick release. I love quick release handles. Before they got affordable, boy, I'll tell you, I spent hours taking the chuck, turning the chuck. Yeah, anyway, you get the picture. Uh, gonna get my ring, and I need to cut a groove. And we got diamond, sapphire, diamond on this side. This channel's a little longer, and we have we wouldn't want to put a diamond and a sapphire in that's what it looks like missing so i'm going to take and get this close here kind of i want about the same distance from the other stone so i'm gonna get my microscope makes it easier so I'm gonna come in at an angle and I'm gonna cut my first groove and then I'm gonna take and once I get my heart burr to where it's it I can get it past the other side 
then I level it out and I cut the back groove. All the time making sure that I'm, I'm the same distance away from this stone as the other stones are from each other. All right, got my groove cut. Willie's got a new groove. I'm going to get a piece of beeswax and I'm going to pick up my diamond with the beeswax. You can see how I got it there. I want to pick it up from the top, not from the bottom. So, okay, so I got it from the bot from the top now. Now I'm gonna take, and when I slide this stone in, I'm gonna slide it in from one side and then bring it over. Okay, I got it in the first groove. Now I'm going to take and, uh, and take a round nose plier and hopefully force that into the other side of the channel. Okay. Popped right in. Perfect. I'm going to just take my round nose here and I'm going to kind of crimp down the channel. Because this channel is very thin and we're going to be rebuilding it. All right. Check our distance. Well, it's a little different, but it's acceptable. Now we're going to do the same thing with the sapphire. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set and I'll be right back. He's back. As you can see, I've got all my stones in there now. Now we need to rebuild the channel itself. And because these are rubies, I'm not rubies, but sapphire and diamonds, uh, I can add heat to them and not destroy the stones. So what I've done is I went and took this, uh, this is 20 gauge wire, gold wire, and I've rolled it flat um, so that way I can solder that onto the edge and build up this channel and make it look like new. Okay, let's throw this into the denatured alcohol, boric acid solution. We're going to set this up in the tweezer so I can see and you can see too. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace one side of the channel. I went and I took a piece of 20 gauge wire and uh, to the rolling mill and I rolled it down just a little bit. Uh, so we have a flat piece of wire, but with a straight edge that we can use to start building this channel up. Okay, put my tweezers on my wire. I'm using two, two tweezers. That way I get a lot of stability with the wire and I can put it where I want it. And what we do, what I do first is I want to tack, just tack it up on one edge. Flex it. And again, I'm using hard solder. Just a little bit. Okay. 
We don't want to melt our wire. Uh, it looks like this channel might have been repaired before. Solder just flowed everywhere. Okay, I got this tacked. Looks like it's in a good position. So I'm gonna let this cool a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it down along the channel and kind of tack it as I go. One of the pitfalls of working on a piece of jewelry, especially one as old as this, is you never know what, who worked on it and what they did, whether they used a hard solder, whether they used the easy flow solder, and sometimes it's, <laughs> and your heart just sinks. The ring almost self-destructs in front of your eyes. It's never, ever, ever a good thing. And you spend, and it always seems like it's the $5 repair where you spend $50 worth of labor to, to send it out and you're making five bucks on it. Eh, it's all about averages. So, now I've got this tacked on here. It looks like it's in pretty good position. And I'm gonna take and bend this down a bit. Okay, I've got a, a little bit of a, of a, where the solder ran and it's, it kind of has a bump in it. Right here. So, but what I do is, is I use my torch and tweezers and I can, I can kind of bend this down on it. So, I want this to run as close as the, as I can to the original channel. And looks like I need to kind of bend it in a bit. Take me around those pliers. Okay. That's looking good. Now I'm gonna take and put a plier here. I mean a tweezer. Wanna make sure that I'm in a position where I can Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take and heat this a little bit. Try to get that lump laid down. And that's pretty good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add solder. And I'm going to use an easier flow solder. It'll flow underneath our wire and give us a good fit, much easier. And I, I just want to basically tack it just a little bit because we don't want it to move too far forward. Okay, you can see I still have a good fit right here. Gonna get another piece of solder. Check it again. Well, that was a challenge. Sometimes, <clears throat> for whatever reason, this ring does not want to melt easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And I'll be right back.
bit quick, wasn't it? I'm fast in the morning when I have my coffee. Anyway, got both sides of the channel built up now. Next, I have to clean it up and make it look like something. Right now, it's pretty darn ugly. So let's make sure it's cooled. It is cooled. One thing I like to do right before I start filing on it and trimming it up is take my hammer and hammer the channel down a bit. Now the trimming process. I start with my big file. Got the sides close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hammer again and hammer it so in case there's any pit marks, I can take care of the pit marks with the hammer. Oh, it's in my lap pan. So, next, I'm going to go ahead and file the top and try to get a smooth fit on the top. Okay, channel's built, stone set, pretty much ready for polish on this side anyway. I still have to rebuild the channel on this side. I have prongs I have to replace, tips I have to rebuild, tips I have to rebuild on the center. Um, uh, the how-to on all this is on previous episodes, so I'm just going to get busy and get to work. There's a lot to do. Drink some coffee. Time to go into hyper speed. Here we go. Are you ready? Hold on to your hats or your optic visors, depending upon what you're wearing. I am ready to do it. One, two, three. Get it on. You see how I'm using, just holding on to the wire? Because gold transmits heat so slowly, I can get away with that. But I've kind of got asbestos fingers. You can see they're not very pretty. But they work. That's all that counts. Okay, back to work. Sometimes when we're heating things, they move on us. So I had to make sure that I got that back in position. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and clip this now too. Boy, was that a workout. Are you tired? I'm worked up a sweat over that. That was a big job. I'm going to let this cool, and then I'm going to come back, trim everything up, clean up the prongs, and we're in good shape. All righty then. Well, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to clean the, clean the uh, channel up, and take care of these prongs. Not a problem. A little more coffee. Back to hyperspeed. Are you ready? One, two, three. Here we go. Sometimes you take a saw blade, uh, I mean a jeweler saw, and trim up your uh, prong. A lot of times when you're doing these kind of jobs, you have to go back through and add a little solder. I have a little bit of a holiday or a gap right here, and I've got a pit mark in one of my tips, so I'm gonna reheat those, throw a little solder into here, and then reheat the tip, and we'll be good to go. Whoopsie, lap pan, glad we, glad we have a lap pan. Kept me off the floor. All right, here we go. We're almost there. We're the, like this close. I still have to size it, but I've covered sizing pretty extensively in the past. So at this point, for all intents and purposes, this ring's done. All right, I guess that just does it for another exciting episode of the da 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 burning bench. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, you can email me at logan1studio at aol.com. Remember to always, always work safe. Until the next time, this is Willie. Thanks for tuning in.